I'm a Virginia girl at heart. I'm a wife, a mother, an author, and civility and event professor. One of my greatest joys is sharing ways that we can grace our homes and communities with love, kindness, goodwill, and hospitality. What I have come to know is that in order to share and love on people that I come in contact with, I must focus on my heart by consciously making an effort to practice daily routines that nurture and infuse my soul with joy, peace, and love. This in turn allows me to feed and love on my family and community. When I am at my best, I can give my best to everyone that I come in contact with. Heart, home, and community is the core of Gracing Up. So please come join with me as I walk through this journey as I share this art of gracious living. Welcome to Gracing Up. This is season two and I am so so excited to be sitting here with you, Doris, today oh, as we you. enter into another season. Yes. And um, Gracing Up is really about your heart, your home, and your community. And when I thought about starting our season two, I could not think of anyone better to present to you all oh, wow. but is Doris, because Doris, you just encompass the, the whole heart piece. You're out in the community. You're doing things not only in your local community, but you're doing things in the world. You're an outstanding mom. Oh, and I'm just you. so proud of all the things you. that you do and that you accomplish. Just a quick background on how we met. It was at a Wings event. Yes. And you were walking through. And I just came up and introduced myself to you. But it, it turned out that we went to the same elementary school, Samuel Chase yes. Elementary in Temple Hills, Maryland. Thought. Yeah, and who would have thought? <laughs> Years, not at the same time, but that was such a connection. Yes. And I knew that that was like a God moment that it we was. were going to be in each other's lives. It so was. I'm so happy to be Thank in you. your beautiful sanctuary. Um, Darius is a first lady. So, Darius, welcome. Thank you. It's yes, a pleasure to be yes, here. Yes. And it's H2O Healing. Yes. And uh, it's in Sterling, Virginia. So, Darius, I, I've given you them a background on you. Um, and I want to know. You have you have your first lady of a church, yes, right, and I, just tell me about that experience of when you became a first lady, okay, and that's such a huge calling. You know what I mean? When your okay. husband, so when your husband, how did that all come about? And you know, tell me that background. Well, wow, we've actually been in ministry for 13 years, and what's interesting about our story is that while dating five and a half years, I mm -hmm. kept asking my husband. You're not going to be a pastor, right? You're not going to be a pastor. Wow. Um, he accepted his call to ministry while we were dating. I flew down to Miami for his trial message. Mm -hmm. And one of my concerns was that I cannot be a first lady. Mm. I just felt like I can't be a first lady. Yeah. So six years into our marriage, when he finally, I knew by then that mm -hmm. it was a call and that we had to accept it. And so we started the ministry here. We planted it ourselves at the Dulles Hilton Hotel. We started three years there, and then we've been here ever since wow. for 10 years. So. It's truly been a blessing. It's been a challenge, but I know that it's God's calling on my life, so it makes things a little bit easier when you know you're doing what God has called you to do. And you know what? You shine so brightly through it. You know what I mean? And I know it's not easy. <laughs> all the things that you do and all the callings that you have on your life, I, it can't be easy. You know, yeah. I just know. But what I love about you most is that when you show up, it's it's not a frazzled spirit. It's a oh, spirit wow. of grace. Well, thank God. <laughs> yes. No. And that's how you do it. So, And then you have three children. You know, you have a teenager and you have two baby girls that are twins or yes. pre They're not baby yes. girls. They're preteens now. You know, in this world that we live in, you know, how do you keep them grounded? How do you, you know, just kind of making sure that they stay on the right path? Because, you know, when I, even when Lauren and my two children when they were in school. Right. It's even changed since then. Yes. So, would, you know, tell me the life of a parenting these it, days. It's, it's challenging. I yeah. think it's even more challenging when um, they have to live in front of the um, camera, okay. per se. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that um, I did, um, which I'm so grateful that I uh, did, was that it was very important for me that I'd be in the home. Okay. Um, and so when I had my son I went in and gave my two weeks notice to my job okay. and so for me that was a huge step because um, even when getting married we never talked about having children okay and which is 
crazy when you think about it, but neither of us, my husband nor I, really, I think, thought about kids. It wasn't until the doctors told me I would not be able to have children yeah. that I had that aha moment. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, can't have kids? I want kids. Right. Um, Look, so we never talked about yeah. it, but it's, yeah. it was it's down like, there. I want that. Yeah, yeah. So it was six yeah. years into our marriage when I finally conceived Dylan. Okay. Um, and it was truly a miracle because I had had lots of um, problems mm -hmm. and I uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Wow. Um, ended up not being cancer, thank God. Mm -hmm. But um, at the age of 28, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had to go through a major surgery. I had a huge tumor the size of a watermelon in wow. my, what they thought was either in my uterus or outside my uterus. And so the doctor said then, you know, thank your God. Yeah. It was truly a miracle that I came out and was still able to um, conceive. And so when I had Dylan, mm -hmm. I said to the Lord, I said, you know, I really want to be home with my child. Right. right. That was really important to me, especially given that. I grew up in a single family home, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so I watched my mom work mm -hmm. and not be there. Right. Um, and so it was very important that I was there. And so and thank what a God. Bless. That yes. is such a blessing. Yes. I know from because I was a stay at home mom in that sense too, and it is a blessing. But what I love about you is that you're so present with your children, but you're still sir, you're doing so much. And I know there's only 24 hours <laughs> of a day. I know that. And so I want to know for where I sit, how do you get all this? stuff done you know you have so many t projects that are going on and we'll talk about that but how do you keep yourself when you think about gracing up and you think about the heart part of it mm -hmm. you know how do you keep yourself centered and and ready to go and be that mom and be the wife and first lady of a church and of a of a pastor and you know you have carol's love right. you you know you you just it, the girls rock first lady you have so many things that's right. going on what is what tell me the secret what is your secret tell um, me you know it's funny um, I was yeah. thinking is there a secret and the yeah. only secret I can say is it's probably not a secret it's yeah. just God yeah. Uh, yeah I can't I can't put my finger on it um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that it looks like I'm doing it with ease because so often I feel like I'm frazzled yeah, um, yeah. so I, I truly would say it's truly the grace of God wow. that allows me to do what I do right um, so when you're going in because I know you were we'll talk we'll go ahead and just jump into Carol's love and each summer you go and you feed a thousand people in uh, the Dominican, Dominican, Republic. Re Dominican Republic and you I think you wrote this it was on social media about how you know just when you're moving up to it how you know the attacks start coming yes. in and that's when you really have to hunker down in yes. your faith right yes so tell me about like even your you just came back you were there in August so tell me about that experience so we go every August and actually mm -hmm. Carol's love was birthed out of the loss of my aunt Carol okay. mm -hmm. um, it was something that the Lord kind of led me to do immediately the day she died mm -hmm. I literally was on my way home mm -hmm. um, from seeing her and it was like God parted the sky right right yeah. <laughs> and I just um, it was one of those defining moments that I had where I knew that I needed to do more with my life okay which is amazing because I feel like I do so much mm -hmm. but I just felt like I needed to be a Carol okay um, and in that um, decided to adopt the country to the Dominican Republic okay having never been there right and right. so um, this was our third year going we go every summer in the month of August mm -hmm. and this year I was able to feed a thousand children wow. Um, wow which is such a great accomplishment given the poverty there yeah we go into the Haitian refugee camps mm -hmm. um, the island is made up of two um, countries Haiti and the Dominican and okay. so a lot of Haitians have migrated to the Dominican for a better life okay, okay. Um, and so I've kind of focus my efforts in a Haitian refugee camp which okay. is called Esperanza wow. which means hope oh. and so we go every year and that's where we feed okay so how did you get to that space and place and say okay this is where we're going and I so I did I want to hear the story um, there was a young couple there that were they were I think they were from Ireland yes and just how God moved them to come in right. and help in that process I want to hear and then I want to hear like some of the things that you all had to overcome when, you're, okay. when you got there so tell me that well it's interesting because every time um, we set out to do missions mm -hmm. um, from a spiritual standpoint. Many people may not understand this if they've never uh, done missions work, mm -hmm. but um, you feel like you're under attack. Okay. So um, I think the easiest way for me to explain it is that uh, the weeks leading up, I have to be in fasting and prayer. Okay. Um, I really have to <clears throat> be reading the Word of God and mm -hmm. really pouring more into my uh, spirit man okay. than my flesh man, if okay. that's the yeah, easy no, way to put yeah, it. Yeah, that's awesome. And way so to put it. Um, each year, it's 
it's amazing and, and never am I caught by surprise, but then at the same time, I'm always like, okay, here we go. Right. You know when it begins. So this year, what was interesting is that um, we got to the airport, we were boarding, and some friends were there, ironically mm -hmm. enough, and mm -hmm. we didn't even know they were going to be on our flight. Oh. Uh, they had two friends with them mm -hmm. um, that we were introduced to. We got on the flight, and um, we agreed that we were going to connect. Okay. That was a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We fed that Friday. Wow. Um, that Thursday, I was on the beach, mm -hmm. um, relaxing, just meditating, praying, mm -hmm. and Giving a gentleman, uh, yeah, 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 trying, yeah. To, trying to get ready, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and um, a gentleman engaged me. Mm -hmm. and and, um, I'm a very talkative person. Okay. I love people. Right. And so as he began to engage me, I knew immediately that it was a defining moment. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever had those moments where you know that it's more than just a conversation, but that God really is going to get the right. glory yeah. out of wow. whatever is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. minutes into engaging me, I told him that we were going to feed a thousand kids the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and he looked at me and he said, would you mind if my wife joins you? Okay. And I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you're welcome to come too. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah. But what was so interesting um, was that they had been outside of where the beach was and mm -hmm. saw the poverty and right. had never done missions work ever mm -hmm. before. But he said that just seeing the poverty there, they felt like they needed to do something. Wow. And they had just talked about that prior to meeting me. And here you come. And here I come. See how God, I love and, it. I, I love it. it. I love so it. I love awesome. it. Yes. yes. So, yes. you know, I get goosebumps. Yeah, like, like, I'm ready to get up and say, yeah. Like when he said, can I help? I was like, right. yay! Yeah. You know, just yeah. inside, you're like, yay! Mm -hmm. So, um, he went and ran and got his wife. Oh. And she came. Her name was Karen. And okay. she immediately, we just, we had seen each other on the beach that day, but, you know, hadn't had a conversation. Right. And she immediately said, can we come? What do we need to do? Yeah. What do we need to bring? And I was like, nothing. Just just, just meet us at 6 a.m. in this spot. And, and what so a they blessing. Did. Blessing for them yes. to be able to be a part of something yes. so great. I, that's what... That's what stands out for me with you, because even during the summertime, you have the, the what is it, the Girls girls, girls Rock, Rock Camp. And it's so empowering for these young girls, and, and you're serving the community in all aspects. And then you have um, the Life Jacket. Yes. So it's like, you, it's so many great things. Yes. And so my question is, how do people find you? For like for all the things that you're doing, because I know I'm, I'm always in tune. Okay, she's right. doing that, and how can I? You know, I'm always there with you. But my thought process is for those that are watching, mm -hmm. who would love to say, you know what, this lady is so amazing, and all the projects she's that she's working on. How can they find you? So what I is think that the way? best way to find me is through social media. Okay. Um, so Doris Carlton okay. is my Facebook page. Okay. I also put a lot of stuff up on our life jacket, which okay. is our 501c3 okay. um, nonprofit arm of. <laughs> Pretty much everything we do, we do under that. Carol's Love falls under that. And so anything that we're doing in the community or even internationally will, will be posted there. Okay, and they can find you through yes. that. And for the Life Jacket, you have a, an event that's coming up in October. Yes. So let's hear more about that. So quarterly, we feed at a local shelter here in okay. Reston, Virginia. It's mm -hmm. called the Emory Rucker Shelter. And so we've committed, we, we'd love to do it more, but what we've committed to this year was feeding every three months. Okay. Um, we also do, for Life Jacket, our annual a huge event is what we call Res Sunday. Okay. But this year we're doing it on a Saturday. Wow. Because it's gotten to be such a big thing, and most people who are helping have church on Sunday, we decided to do it on Saturday this year. Okay. So okay. that's always the Saturday before Christmas okay. where we feed 500 people wow. here in the community. Okay. So they can find you through, through yes. that too. Yes. So, okay, on top of all this, okay, so we've got the community, <laughs> then you do your real estate. Oh, goodness. Yes. And, and Darius, you were featured on Bravo's uh, Potomac Housewives because yes. one of your client um, was on there so we know that you do some awesome work and yes. um, so tell me about that and how did you get into real estate on top of everything else? <laughs> <laughs> well okay. um, when we moved out to the Loudoun County area I was working for America Online okay. and I was laid off. We built a house here my mm -hmm. husband was working at the University of Maryland in okay. athletics mm -hmm. and um, house was finally ready. It took a year and a half to have right. this house built and we moved in in November and January I was laid off Okay. <laughs> and the feeling I had was more of concern not for my job, right, but right. the fact that I'd moved my husband all, all the way, way out here, here right, right. for him to commute to College Park every day. And so what was interesting is that at the same time I was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, the yeah. day I was laid off, the very same day, I was laid off at noon at 2 o'clock that afternoon. I had an appointment with a specialist and mm -hmm. 
uh, Montgomery County, and mm -hmm. the same day I was told that my tumor was humongous, that I needed to have surgery, I needed to have it right away, and that they thought it was cancer. Wow. So here I am at 28 years old, never having children, yeah. newly married, in a new area. Look, moving all the way over here to yeah, Virginia. Yeah, all the way over here to Virginia, <laughs> being told, you know, cancer. And I yeah. just remember um, the feeling that I had. Um, it was probably one of those moments, as I said earlier, that was really defining for me because mm -hmm. it was a moment where my faith really had to kick in. You had to dig deep. You had yeah. to kick in. Yeah. And what was amazing is that when I looked back, I was like, wow, it was really God that just kept me because I had mm -hmm. such a peace through it all. Okay. Um, which was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, but having to go through that at such a young age and having lost my job the same day, mm -hmm. um, as I was healing and recuperating, I had a friend that was in real estate who was mm -hmm. also an attorney and she looked at me and she said, you've always said you wanted to get your real estate license. Right. And it was one of those things that I was like, oh yeah, I have said that. Mm -hmm. You know, you forget things that you've said. Right, right. And it was more so because I wanted to be a real estate investor. Okay. I always wanted to own property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so at that time of being laid off and home, mm -hmm. decided to get my real estate license. Wow. And okay. got it hoping that it's going to help me, it's going to benefit me. But mm -hmm. over the years, yes, I, I practice real estate. I'm licensed in Virginia and Maryland. Okay. Um, and I don't promote or solicit, right. but um, advertise. But what happens is that people who are very close to me or family and friends mm -hmm. or past people who've used me prefer okay. people. Right, right. So it's well, great you know, in that I'm not super busy. Right. No, that's <laughs> good because I always think about this when they, because I did real estate for like a mm -hmm. second, but it was just a second. But part of it was like the, just your sphere of influence yes. and how, you know, just that yes. is such a big marketing it tool is. and like who, you know, it's like who, not what you know, but who, who you, know you know in a sense exactly. and bringing things to you. And, but it's all a balance too because even though you're not extremely busy all the time but it's like yes. you still like you, you have the the mom wife yes. real estate community you're doing it all I, I'm just telling you you're doing it all and I am so proud of you Thank my you. look my fellow Samuel Knight yes, was Samuel yes. Chase Knight <laughs> yes I am so proud of everything that you're doing and you keep on doing it and I the, my last words is there is there anything that you can do that you can encourage someone that's watching this today that they may be juggling a lot of balls mm -hmm. and they're saying, you know what? She makes it look so easy, but give them some words of encouragement of how just run it. Cause you, you, we know not everybody's juggling all the things that you're juggling, right. but when I say grace under pressure, just grace in all aspects of the, your life, that's what you embody. So can you encourage our, our, um, viewers and give them some words of wisdom and guidance and love so I think it's important um, over the years that we not be so busy mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that we be fruitful okay and so I would just challenge those who are listening that if you feel as though you're overloaded or that you're too busy um, then you probably need to scale back on some things okay and really look at the things that should be priority mm. the things that you believe um, you're called to do or even those things that make your baby leap as we say you mm. know um, and concentrate on those things. Make a priority list. You know, I think that twins truly taught me how to prioritize. Okay. Because up until that point, I thought I could do it all. And I they're high was, energy. Yes, girls. they're <laughs> high energy. I did not get one quiet child out mm -hmm. of the three. And so that kind of made me readjust. Mm -hmm. We also, um, in our home, the word parameters okay. is very popular. Okay. Where we set parameters. Mm. We have certain days that we do certain things. Okay. And because we're so busy, there's a day where we cannot talk about church. Okay. And when we first implemented that, it was so difficult and it still is. Okay. And sometimes okay. it's it's a lot of arguing because I'm like, I just need this question right. answered. Right. And my husband will say, not on Monday. Well, good. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Oh, good. But I good. think that that's so important in life because we can become so busy mm -hmm. and life is so fleeting mm. that we miss out on really what we were sent here to do. And just being in tune with it. Yes. Well, thank you for your words of wisdom thank you. and thank you for your love and that for it, for all that you're doing to serve our community, to serve your family. Because when you're serving your family, guess what? They're going to go out and they're doing it now. They're serving their communities too. So thank you so much, and I love you love and you keep too. on keeping on. With thank all you that you're so doing. much. You're welcome. And thank you for watching this episode of Gracing Up. Much love. Thank you.